everybody, welcome to Beyond the Lines. My name is Sarah, I'm the artist behind Pinselgeschichten, and today I'm gonna start a new sub series uh, for colors, and it is, well, as it says in the title, gray. So all the grays that come with all the different supplies I'm gonna work on in this and the next three videos, and today I'm gonna start with Copic markers, or I should say, alcohol markers because I'm uh, having various markers that I'm working with, mostly Spectrum Noir and uh, Copic. Now, uh, the book I chose to show you what I like to do when it comes to applying certain types of grey to have a base color and have nice shading and a little bit of a focus and a little bit of a difference in color. I'm working in this book here, it's called Inspiration Dream Travel, maybe? It's a German book, uh, but these pictures in here, they are, uh, I think it is Dover books that they come up with. It's just pretty much the, the, the one that is on the German market and I got it from Amazon a long, long time ago. I think it was three years now, so I don't know if it's even available, but it has this picture in here and the robot and this is the one that I'm gonna uh, color today and that I'm gonna complete and I'll talk to you about, like I said, how I like to work with warm grays and cold grays to have a, um, a main color that I shade and uh, then have a little, well, accessoire color, which in my case, the warm gray. So uh, here we go, enjoy. All right, so as I said in the intro, this is the object to color and uh, this is pretty much one of the last pages in the inspiration coloring book that I used for, well, trying out color combos with the Faber-Castell pit pens and see what I liked there. You can see here already this side is flagged for the Tombow or Faber-Castell um, uh, markers. So next week this is what I'm going to uh, color there and maybe have a bit of a comparison to this side but today I'm working on this uh, robot here. I do have all my gray alcohol markers with me. There's a few Copics and a few Spectrum Noir. They are all, the Spectrums are all cold gray. And here I do have um, warm gray and cold gray and a black because I always allow myself to have black. So I'm going to separate those between cold grays they are here and the warm grays. The warm grays have, as the name implies here, they have a warm touch, so they are towards a brown. The cold grays tend to be towards the blue. So I'm separating those just to make it easier for me to uh, grab the right marker and now here on this robot I want to use um, maybe mainly the cold grays because I have a lot of tones of those and have the accents be with the cold gray. I'm not necessarily needing, I don't need to have all of the line work uh, work for me here meaning um, I uh, I'm throwing markers for one. Uh, I don't have to work with all of the lines and details here. On these bigger chunks I will just work with um, well with with a big shape of the robot and I don't care about the pages after that. These two pages are the last one that I'm going to color in this book and this then goes to the stack of oh I finished those books or I'm not going to work in them anymore. So I don't have to put a cardstock or anything behind here. It can bleed through and I, I'm i totally fine. So I'm going to start with a light tone. Not with my lightest though. There's one more 
uh, light gray there but you can see here I have three light colors three dark colors of the cold gray and I want to start with the uh, spectrum noirs maybe uh, or do I because well now let's start with the copics they are older so they will be dry way sooner and I have C1, C3, C5, C7 um, and um, I should maybe go with a mid-tone here, the C3 and color with that as much as I can until this marker gets dry and then I can throw them away. So I'm just testing here. Oh, this is already pretty dry so I'm um, you can see how little I can feather in. Um, but, well, let's see. Uh, I want, so the light is supposed to come from the upper right in my piece here. So I will shade towards the lower left. But he has his head bent. So there's a darker bit here on the front and then there's light here in the back meaning I'm bringing in a C1 marker and that one is quite juicy still at least a bit more well a lot juicier than the um, than the three marker but well Let's see. So I'm going for this next section here where I know that there is the lighter part. And up here I'm coming into the darker bits. So I'm putting down the C3 and then I'm blending this out with the C1. Uh, all the details, so the antenna up here and this ear or a headphone I'm gonna disregard for now I might uh, color those with um, with uh, the warm gray I just want the base to be colored now the face here uh, is gonna be darker of course but I don't want to go super dark so I don't want to go to the uh, spectrum uh, the uh, Copic C5 but I'm going to go with IG4 with which is pretty much the uh, C4 of the uh, Copics I guess so I'm going to color the bits maybe maybe it's a C5 actually but I'm just gonna color the whole front of the face that is um, not the eye, the nose or the mouth. And those little bolts that I skipped on the right hand side, I'm also gonna skip them on the left hand side. By the way, since you I just stopped talking there for a second, sorry for any weird background noise or louder cars or stuff. It is, I'm filming this um, second half of October and today is uh, actually summer weather. Very unseasonal, so it is way too hot for me in the studio to work with a closed window. And I cannot have the fans on, otherwise I have other audio problems, so I'm kind of hoping that people just don't drive uh, in front of my house too much. I'm, by the way, bringing in C5 now and trying to see how much it actually differs. The Copics are even bluer in tint than the Spectrum Noirs, but that's fine. Just gonna put the C5 on top here. So if you if you hear cars and such or I don't know Vespas and 
things. I'm sorry for that. But I have to be able to breathe and not sweat onto my uh, artwork here too much. I'm feathering in a smidge of the C5 here over the C3 just to blend all of the parts of that cube together here. There we go. And then I can move on to the body and I'm doing the same thing as I do here with the head. So I'm starting with C1. Now it smells like that motorcycle in my studio. Blah! It's, my throat is not happy with that. It's, sorry, I have to drink something. My throat really hurts from these uh, fumes there. I hope that's better now. So now here underneath the mouth, I'm still keeping the mouth uncolored, but down here there is to st there's things to start with the C3, and then I bring in the IG4 because I want the same dark uh, here as well. Because remember, I had said that I'm getting darker and darker towards the lower left. So here on this part, the head actually shades or it, it, it puts this part of the shoulder here into shadow. So that's why I'm coloring this way darker. I'm feathering it out here. And for the rest, I just bring in the C5 and keep that cooler tint, you know? Just feathering it in and also putting it on top of here and then I can go in with the next bit and that is the coolest uh, the darkest cool gray tone that I have on the Copics that is a C7 and I will just shade here underneath the head just a bit blend it out with C5 and like that, you can have very nice values with just the cool grays, you know. And uh, it's almost like a, it's the same principle for black and white painting or drawing, coloring, whatever. And for any other monochromatic uh, piece there, you just want to start with the same principle, the same values. And then you will be able to uh, or you, you will just be able to concentrate on your values if you start with monochromatic and we seem to find it easier to do that with gray or black and white uh, that is um, in comparison to other colors uh, we seem to be able to see values there easier. Now I'm trying to find out, well, let's see where I put the cool gray and where I'm definitely gonna keep white bits for the warm gray. Not too much, just want a little bit of warm gray there. This uh, robot here is mainly cold gray. I think this would fit here and I'm using the same IG4 that I also used as the hat. It is um, very important with monochromatic things like this to repeat the same values, especially for the mid-tone and then vary in your highlights and in your dark tones. So now I want this part and this part to be the same color too. And these um, rings here, I want them a bit darker. So I'm going to go in with an IG8. So it's a, I skip one 
shade of cold gray that I have with the spectrum guys go to the next one and that will make sure that I have contrast there because that is what I want Uh, all the numbers of the uh, pens that I'm using today of the markers will be on the blog post. It uh, The blog post will go live in a couple of um, minutes. So it's actually like uh, 45 minutes or something after this video comes out. Uh, I will also use this very dark tone here on the center. Again, to have color repetition and to have another big piece of this robot be colored in a cold gray. So if you want to know what markers I use that want to be reminded, maybe only hop on over to the blog. Uh, I will have close-up photos of this page here, up there, and again, those markers, so the, all the numbers of the markers. So whenever you feel like, oh, I like that one, I like that combo, you can look it up again, you know. Uh, for this little frame here I'm going to take a lighter bit because this is sitting in the light a bit more that uh, rectangle uh, that I just colored with IG8 is further into the stomach of the robot and this one here is IG6 so now uh, da, 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 da. I can go on with the sides here and I'm taking a C3 again to feather things out but I can actually the front before the uh, or anything towards the stomach that is in front of this arm I can go with out feathering just color c3 layer c5 on top and then have a little bit of c7 there to shade because the arm is actually shading that part of the robot and up here there's the lightest section and there has to be some feathering going on in a minute but i'm gonna start here on the arm and down here can have darkest shadow like this and I can blend it out into C5, you know. And then go with the lightest gray again from back here and that is that. Now for the arm, uh, the light hits, so I'm gonna have light here, 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 and here. This is where the light hits and all the other parts I can solidly go in with the next shade that is a C3. So there's no sunlight hitting this. You can even go darker. I hardly have any C3 anymore. Ah, help. Oh well. Uh, C5, I'm going to bring in for the shadowy bits here. To have them be a bit darker. So here and in here then there's the darkest color the C7 that I'm just gonna feather in here at these very dark bits There's going to be some over here. Some on this section, just very little feathering in and that will help with 
the shading and having this look cohesive. So there's the dark, and then there's an indentation there. So let's have a bit of a dark here. Going back to the C3, going to blend this out. and then bring in the C1 to blend some more. And I can go all over the arm, making sure that every little bit is covered um, and I can blend stuff together or just have one little layer of C1 depending, you know? So that is the arm and I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Now this is way darker. I don't really need the C1 that much. Uh, maybe just a little bit down here on that part, but I need C5 and uh, C7 quite a bit, but also a little bit of C3. Where there's the lighter sections, it's going to be a bit lighter here on this bit. Now I'm going to bring in the C5 from the lower part, feathering it in into that lighter tone. Here I can go solid. Then solid. So all of my cold gray markers are almost dry and they're definitely gonna go to sleep in the trash bin after this video is done. As, except for the C7 that is quite juicy still so probably not gonna put that away, but uh, I find that I work just as well with the Spectrum Noirs as I do with the uh, Copics, but the pricing is a they're not cheap though, Spectrum Noirs, not at all, but the pricing is a little f friendlier for, um, for me. Uh, with the amount of time that I'm using those markers, you know, so I'm uh. I would go for the Spectrum Noirs to uh, work with instead of the, um, oh gosh, what's it called, uh, the Copics. However, when it comes to skin tones, I really like the Copics, so I would rebuy a set there then. Okay. Blending things together with a C1 just to make everything smooth. There we go. And uh, you can see it is very much darker, so it just, <coughs> excuse me, it just uh, maybe needs even a bit more of a dark here. Mm. <laughs> I'm gonna bring in the IG-8 of the Spectrum Noirs and bring those in here, that section, and that section. And I can blend it out with the Copic 5. There we go. Yep, that's more like it. So uh, now it's just for the legs and then I can go in with final details and shade and such uh, on a different level and also bring in the contrast which is the um, the warm grey. But for the legs I'm going with cold grey again. The lightest color is going to be the C3 and uh, the mid-tone will be the C5. So. There's only so much light that's going to come through, so the light is here, it is here on the crotch of the robot, and down here. The rest will be C5 and C7, so 
gonna bring in the C5. I'm hoping my mark keeps <coughs> juicy enough for that. I might bring in the IG4 for the front, but I kind of like that the stomach and the face are different from the arms and such and the legs too. So now I bring in my dark gray. Feathering in things. And feathering for me personally is always easier upwards, not so much downwards. There we go. Oh, same here on the crotch section. So I can actually keep the book this way for a minute. And do the same here on this leg, feathering up. Sorry for the background noise again, but I guess people are coming home from work. So we have a bit of a louder time here. So keep the knees light. And go in for the shins with a bit of this dark gray. And then I come in with the C5 blend and blend. And then I can blend the C5 into the C3. Let's see if the chisel side is a bit juicier. Yeah, I can use that here. There we go. That's that. I'm going to bring in the IG-8 here, where there's the arm in front. I'm going to feather that in too, just to keep the parts of the robot separate, so the legs from the crotch part and the uh, arms shade quite a bit on the side here. So just to increase the contrast and um, have a bit of a darker tone there. Um, Shading this a little darker. Okay. And now I just colored the wrong part. <laughs> There's this little triangle where I thought, oh, this is from the legs. No, it's not. So I'm going to let this dry and then bring the white gel pen on top. But for now, I can move on and work with um, with the to sort the markers that I used with the warm grays now. These are the shades that I have. This is W one two uh, one three and five. I want to start with the lightest one for the antenna because again the light hits from the right upper side. So of course it does the same thing here on the antenna. And for the darker bit, I bring in the W three. Just to shade this a bit. Uh, the same goes here for that ear or headphone. On the top, there's this uh, W1 on the bottom, W3. And I even can go a little darker here with the W5. And also in this indentation here. Need the C1 to blend out that little bit. That bled into my C1. OK, 
Okay, on the other side it's going to be exactly the same thing, so the one on top, the three feathering in from the bottom, and towards the head here a little bit of the five. And that makes for enough contrast to uh, work with this, um, what's he called, robot. So for the face here, the, since this is all in shadow, I'm going to move down one step. So the W3 is going to be the light, the W5 is going to be mid-tone, and the W7 is going to be darks. So I will start with the 3 here, have the 5 here. And a little bit of the 7 here in this part and also towards the bottom. There we go. For the eyes, the darkest bit I'm gonna have in these rings here, that's a W7 that I'm using. I'm going to use the W3 Three, the light here as the eyebrows pretty much or the the lids uh, going in with the W5 here on these edges feather a bit of a darker shade in from the left and the right on the lids and then Go on top with the W3 again, smooth everything out. Um, this is the 7, this is the dark. So I'm going to keep this very dark. And I'm going to have black as the pupil pretty much on this robot here and I'm going to use a white gel pen for a reflection in the eye at the end and also to repair my miscoloring down here but uh, for now I'm gonna leave it at that and have the W3 here on the lower parts of the eyes again and feather in the W5 from the from the section of the eyes towards the lower part where maybe a bit more light hits and then feathering in the W3 from the other side. Uh, those bolts here are going to be the light color so that's W3 and with the mouth I'm going in with W3 uh, feathering in from the bottom the W5 have a smidge just a line here of the W7 and then blend everything together with the W3 so the light tone um, maybe a bit of the dark up here just a very light line Bring that together. Need a sip of water again. Now I can go on to those bolts here and I want the W3 as my base tone and a bit of the W5 Uh, as these details here. So I think that these two sections would be white and all the others would be various things of metal. So I'm using the lightest uh, warm gray because it is still so much in shadow that it is dark but I'm using this to color the the um, buttons and such and I'm feathering in a little bit of the W3 just on the lower side to have a shadow going on 
and I'm bringing in the C1 again and there we go. This is pretty much all the um, the details I need. Now I can check with specifically this part here if I want to use maybe a darker tone and the answer is yes. I want to use, I had used the IG8 and now I want to use a little bit of the next shade that is IG10 just to feather this in from the top because he is bent downwards so on the top part here he's gonna have a darker shade than on the lower part where you have a little bit of light getting into this uh, section here. Ooh. So I just feathered in IG10 from the top and now I'm going to turn this and feather in the IG8 from the bottom. Also quite unable to not have everything go the way that it shouldn't so I will have to use a little more IG6 and blend out this color mishap there just to lighten this section up here. Now I can work a bit with the patterns here Color those triangles a little bit darker. But that would be pretty much it for the cool gray. I'm going to have a reflection here. And this is my little robot. And you can see how easy it is. I'm just giving this a little bit of a light gray down here. It's almost not visible but you can blend out some color mishaps there. Um, but you can see that with that few tones, that very little amount of uh, coloring there, if you have your values correct and you have one main color old gray in this case and one focus or additional color warm gray in this uh, case you can get quite the nice contrast and still have things look uh, not too flat but also not too busy and uh, like that you can achieve well nice values there I hope. So uh, I hope you liked what you saw. Maybe you got inspired for another art piece that you work on. That is my vlogging camera going to sleep because I'm done now. And um, you can definitely hit up the blog post for this uh, page here if you like. There's again all of all of this is listed there. And uh, I'm going to be back next week with um, this uh, piece here. I'm going to work with the Tombos and uh, Faber-Castell pit brush pens. I'm going to show you a, a different style of coloring this and working with the, the benefits of a certain supply there. But working with cold and warm grays again um, and with very little pens only, not as many as I use today. So uh, have fun folks, take good care, have a great week and I hope you enjoy. Um, do something nice for yourself today and I'm going to be back with this format on next Thursday and there's going to be other videos throughout the next couple of days to keep you entertained until the next part comes up. Have fun, goodbye and uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye!